So morning, uh, I'm Krish and I'm one of the activists at the aquarium. Um, I'm responsible for our jellyfish and our corals and yeah, this is us during lockdown. What's nice about lockdown is the fact that we don't just have our own areas to look after. We get to look after a bunch of other areas and now my interest is in vertebrates, animals are the backbone. Um, yeah, we get to look after sharks and a bunch of other things as well. So I'm just gonna walk you through some of the exhibits and then we'll do some feeding in a bit. This is our coral exhibit. We have lots of hard corals and soft corals. We have a school of fish in the tank because the fish's poop is a very, 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 very good food, food source for the corals. That's a coral reef and we'll feed that a bit later. And we're gonna eat the jellies now. So part of being under lockdown is the fact that you get to see pretty things that you don't normally get to see like the rainbow of lights coming from the bridge exhibit. It's always nice to see that in the morning. So we still have lots and lots of jellyfish on exhibit. Let me climb up here so I can show you guys. From the top. We have lots of jellyfish on exhibit still. So these are moon jellies. Uh, so jellyfish are just basically giant nets for food and I'll pour some smoothie in the water now so you guys can see that. Uh, so the jellies get smoothie every day and in the smoothie is everything you can think of on the seafood table from egg, fish eggs, prawns, krill, mussel, a ton of food. Um, so they, they get fed really well. So I'm going to pour in some smoothie we can watch these guys eat quickly. So basically, it's just a cloud of food. And you can see this jelly already has food being stung and captured on its tentacle. As you can see, they used to have little hairs from the edges of the umbrellas. Now those little hairs are becoming clumped. That's basically where they stung some food and as the jellyfish pulses, it's flicking that food onto the four little lips in the middle of it and then it'll rub it into its mouth. So that's basically how they eat. And as they swim, they're always eating, always consuming some sustenance. You see all of this one's little, little hairs or tentacles are all gone. They're not gone, they just fired and sting, stung some food. So our jellies get fit smoothie. <laughs> as I mentioned before. And what's quite cool is jellyfish have stinging cells on them called nematocysts. Basically, it's just little harpoons of venom that grab onto the food and allows the food to stick to the jellyfish. And so the jellyfish have stinging cells that fire and harpoon everything. So they've got a, a stinging cell to catch fish, a stinging cell for fish eggs, a stinging cell for jellyfish if they eat jellyfish. So it's basically like Velcro sticking to certain kinds of material only and so this smoothie i'm going to slowly feature the jellyfish now we put it in between the lips of the jelly see if i can record it on the water for you guys They feed them really, really slowly. And whatever wisps away back into the water, the jellyfish will eat later as they pulse and swim around. So don't worry about that. It's not being wasted. The jellyfish will just have it later. It's like having too much food for now, just keeping it around for later, basically. So the aquarium is quite cool. Um, we keep jellyfish. That's fine, nowhere else. 
Um, we're going to do some water changes for our Kent Campus Junior Fish. So those are the ones that you will normally see wash up uh, in Fast Bay and Table U. We also have some really cool root mouth jellies. For the first time, root mouth jellies are being grown. Lots and lots of baby upside down jellies. Like a lot of things. And this is the culture lab. We make Batinia and Rotifers, which are little microscopic creatures that the jellies and cuddles eat. And that is for jellies, that's Rotifers and some green water. So the green water is just basically the rotifers grazing so they can have their maximum sustenance for the day. Get all their vitamin C's and omegas. That's our team here for jellies. We'll top up the water to about 25 liters. That's how much the jellies need today. And this is for the Amphara jellies in education. We'll go visit them a bit later. So yeah, this is all the food. And Bamania is doing culture lab on our shift. So this is where the new Artemia will be made. This is the old Artemia. All that's day on. So the money is going to feed them algae. And I'll show you our culture lab. So we grow our roti furs. And this is where we grow our green water. So like I said, our green water we've got chlorella. We've got nanoperopsis. Those are two species of algae we grow. And so we do something called gut loading. Where the little artemia, we'll go back to the video. The Artemia, after he starts using his yolk sac, starts eating the algae and he loads his gut with all the good nutritious algae and that gives his body good vitamins and nutrition and so by the time the jellyfish and all the other invertebrates eat the Artemia, they are even more nutritious and even more healthy than when they first hatched. Oh, and his baby sea horses as well. See how tiny this guy is, this is my finger. Like as small as my finger. There's another one. They're so small. They're like super duper tiny. Adorable little seahorses. I love signatures like seahorses and leafy sea dragons and pipefish. Okay, so we're gonna make some smoothie for the jellies. So we have some fish flakes in there now. And then we're gonna add our zooplankton. So we always add a lot of krill for the jellies is very nutritious. So curl goes in first, then we add some red zooplankton and then we add some frozen copepods and we add some frozen roti furs as well to the mix. All of the things the jellyfish would have been eaten in the wild. The jellies get to eat lots of fish eggs because they love fish eggs. So these are all frozen fish eggs and some frozen white mussel. Sometimes we add some prawn as well um, but it depends on the day. So all of that is going to go in there and we're going to add some seawater very gently and then we're going to blend it Ooh. we're going to add some hake as well so what's important with the hake is the fact that we're going to debone it because jays can't eat bones so, I'm just gonna cut a piece of heck, just the medallion. So, this is basically what we end up with, and that's gonna be a delicious soup for the jellies to eat. So, this is our hand blender, stick blender. We have a more powerful one here as well. Um, stand up. The thicker, the better. So the jellies have a staple of krill every day and fish eggs and cocoa pods. And then depending on the day, we'll add some different kinds of fish, like I said, poached or hake. We'll add hake roe, um, 
we add completely like our prawns. So the recipe, the base of the recipe stays the same, uh, but we add different things on different days, depending on what we have in the kitchen, and then depending on the Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, which is the definite days, the jellyfish get um, this smoothie as well. So there's lots of different recipes, but the base of the recipe stays the same. So yeah, just tidying up what we missed. So we are about to feed Coral Tang the second feed for the day. So in here we have some crow and some zooplankton. We're gonna add our fish flakes and our pellets. So fish flakes. A scoop of that. And some pellets. And all of the fishies. You see them all coming. And grab something to eat. Lights. We use LED lights to grow our corals and the lights are still starting up very slowly so most of the corals are still closed um, but they'll extend themselves, especially the soft corals, will start extending themselves and open um, up very slowly. Uh, today we're going to do a 20% water change. So we do a monthly water change to just replace all the supplements that the corals take out of the water like the iodine and the strontium and things like that. And then we also buffer our tank with um, calcium supplements and alkalinity supplements to keep up with the growth rate of our corals because corals take the calcium out of the water to build their skeletons which are on the outside of their bodies. So yeah, this is just a little coral reef over here. So this is education. Um, the aquarium's education staff in the aquarium itself sees more than 75,000 students in these classrooms a year and they get to learn about anemones and sharkies not all sharkies are dangerous so they get to experience that i'm going to feed our upside down jellies upside down jellies are jellies and corals are in the same group kind of and these upside down jellies are basically mobile corals <laughs> they can swim around so they just sit around the whole day and the only time they ever swim is if you want to find a better spot to suntan or get better light so it's very very beautiful See, there's this light blue color and you get many different kinds of upside down jellyfish they've got all these little mouths on their lips and they're very intricate and so they besides the sunlight that photosynthesis with the zooxanthellae in the tissues um like coral where they convert light energy into chemical energy um they also get to get proteins and so this is us feeding them some artemia that's been enriched with some plankton so that they can be even more nutritious for the jellies to eat. And you can see Sonny's already happily pulsing, getting his sustenance.